people know that prayer works, they might not want to live the Christian life, but they know that prayer works. I remember when I was younger, when I was ill at the age of 14, and uh, I went back to school, and there were all these rumours going around about me. I I think my favourite one was that I had a big hole in my tummy, and that when I swallowed my food, you could watch it down. And And I'd find, I'd walk along the corridor, and I'd have people go in, like looking at my tummy just to see if they could spot this big hole in my tummy. So I asked if I could take uh, assembly. So it was a year assembly. I went to a girls' school, so you can imagine <laughs> imagine what that was like. Uh, so I took the year assembly and uh, I started to, to explain, you know, factually what had happened to me. And then I just felt God prompting me to, to share a testimony. And I just said to them, you know, I know that I'm here because there are people all over the world praying for me. And I could see a few of them going, oh, no, she's one of them. And I, and I looked at them and I said, I know, you're, you're probably thinking, well, I don't believe in God. I said, but I'm, I bet you, as soon as something goes wrong, the first thing you do is pray. And you could see it in their faces. Now, I thought from that day on I would be, you know, bullied uh, every day of my life. But actually, I was never bullied Never, ever, because I stood up for what I believed. And they couldn't argue with what I was saying because that was exactly what they did. As soon as there was trouble, they would pray because people know that prayer works. So why, why are we not, why are we not on our knees praying every second of every day? Have we, have we forgotten the power of prayer? In a fusion... Uh, we, we, I had to laugh this week because on, on Monday at the end we said, uh, so would anybody, anybody like to pray? You know, is anything going on? Anybody like to pray? And it's like, you know, one of those tumbleweed moments, you know, deathly silence. And it's like, <laughs> you know, you're looking around. And I went, you know, one, one of these days we're going to say, does anybody want to pray? And you're going to stick your hand up and go, Kerry, I'd love to pray. Like this. So on Thursday, we met together and started the bit, and Gary said at the beginning, so we're just going to open in prayer. Would anybody like to pray? I'm looking around, and again, it's like, don't, don't look in her eyes. Don't look in her eyes. <laughs> but I caught Joe's eye, and I was going, Joe, Joe. Like this. And he went, Kerry, I'd love to pray. And we were like, Yeah! <laughs> And, I, you know, I know he was, he was, he was, trying, but he did pray, which was great. But when we asked them, why is it you don't want to pray? Is it because you don't believe in prayer? And, uh, but they do. They do believe in prayer. They believe that prayer works. But they go, we don't know how to pray. We don't know how to pray. Like they listen to you lot and your very eloquent prayers that are so powerful. And they go, I don't know how to pray. But actually, Prayer is just talking, just talking to our daddy. But even the disciples had the same question, and they asked Jesus, how, how do we pray? So I just want to turn to that in Matthew chapter 6. And just before we start on that, I just want you to start thinking, because we're going to go through different parts of this prayer, but I, I want you to be a part of this morning as well. So I want you to be thinking um, and just allowing the Holy Spirit to prompt you um, to bring testimony of the things that Jesus mentions in, in the Lord's Prayer. So about his provision, about his deliverance, about forgiveness, about the, the, the keeping his name holy. So just be thinking if you have a testimony uh, that you could share briefly, that would, be, that would be great. So Matthew 6 and from verse 5, it says, When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. 
Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. I love that. Your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. Pray like this, and I'm going to stop there because I know that you know the Lord's Prayer. So let's say it together. We'll, we'll say the old version. I, I realized when I joined the Church of England that there was a modern version, but we're going to say the old version that you probably learned at school. So let's say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh, so excited to drop glasses. So, you know, we know, we were taught as children how to pray. But we probably learnt it by, by repetition and never really fully understood what it was that we were praying. So we're just going to have a little look at it. So the first part, hallowed be thy name. Holy is your name. Do we really grasp that? Do we grasp how holy, how incredibly powerful the name of Jesus is? You know, I, 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 it grates on me when I hear people using the name of Jesus as a swear word. And they just do not understand the power that there is in that name. I don't know if anyone's got a testimony on that. I've got one, if, if not. Okay, I'll kick it off then. So a number of years ago, you, you know that I used to uh, work with an organization called Good News Crusade. And uh, we used to have a camp in a place called Malvern. And Malvern has uh, it's these big hills. It's famous for its hills. And one evening after we'd finished... Um, our work, putting up, we, we used to meet in a big, uh, like, a bit like a circus tent, a big top. And a few of us decided to go for a walk up the hills. And it was starting to, to get dark. And we walked up this hill. And we were aware of a couple of people walking in front of us, but didn't think anything of it. Carried on. And then we got to this place. And it was just, the sun was setting. And it was just incredibly awesome. And we just started to praise God there. We started to, to sing. And it was when the song, Jesus Shall Take the Highest Honor, um, was really popular. And we just stood there singing, Jesus Shall Take the Highest Honor. And then we turned around and there was this thing behind us. I can only describe it as a thing. And we knew that it was a dynamic thing. And we didn't say anything to each other. We just went okay, let's just keep lifting up the name of Jesus. We started singing, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. And we, it was like a battle that we were uh, involved in at that time. And we were singing and we were praising and we were lifting his name. And then suddenly something, something just broke. At the same time, we just all felt it. Something in the heaven is broke. And we just, we just stood there praising God. And then that was it. We just, we never said anything to each other. We just all said, let's go. It's time to go. We, we walked off and we walked home. And uh, we sat, uh, the next day we sat in, in my caravan and we were going, did anyone else see that? Was that just me? Did anyone else see that? So the next day we took a whole group of people up there and we realized that actually what we had done, we were standing on a site that was used uh, for witchcraft, there's a lot of witchcraft in the hills there. And we were standing on a site. We hadn't noticed because it was getting dark. We hadn't noticed the ground around us. And so we prayed. We just prayed that this would become holy ground. That nothing else could take. This was holy ground and we claimed it in Jesus' name. We went back the following year. It was totally covered in grass. There was no, they couldn't use it anymore. 
They couldn't use it anymore because this was holy ground. That is the power of the name of Jesus, the holy, awesome, incredible God. Hallowed be your name. Let's remember that he is holy. He is set apart. He's not, he's not like any other God. He is, he is incredible. Hallowed be your name. So next, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I don't know about you, but I long for that day. I long for that day when we see the power of the kingdom of God here on earth. That it becomes natural to us. That it just becomes, this is, this is what it is. This is what God does. He, he, he's a miracle working God. He's, he's a healing God. He is, and we know it. So why are we not seeing it? Why are we not seeing it? Is it because there's not enough sick people to go around? I, I don't think it is. We all know people that have a need. So why are we not seeing it? Maybe it's because, maybe it's because we're, we're not praying. Maybe, maybe we're not praying, believing that God is able to do this, this incredibly holy, amazing God that we've just talked about. He's, he's able. He's able. Yeah, you know, I, I just so long to see that time when, you know, people are going, do you know what, I, I, I need, need to be healed. I've got this whatever and rather than going to the hospital, they're going, can, is, it, is it right if we rock up on a Sunday morning so you can pray for us? How amazing would that be? Is it possible? It is possible. It is possible. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying this to condemn you. Even, even the disciples struggled and they saw Jesus in the flesh performing miracles healing people. They even struggled. So I'm, I'm not condemning you, but you know, let's, let's be expecting that. Let's allow God to cause our faith to rise so that we're in that place where we go, do you know what, God, it's over to you. All we're doing is, is just asking. That's the easy part. We're not, we're not healing. We're not, we don't have the power to do that. Only God has the power to do that. But, but we, we're just asking. We're just the ones standing in the gap going, Lord, there's this need over here. We give it to you. Lord, will you, will you have your way? So does, does anybody have a testimony on uh, healing or on God providing something miraculously? Someone must have. Someone must have. Julia. If that's okay. You didn't know you were sharing the word today, did you? <laughs> I didn't expect to come up this way. But I must say, in the past, when people say a miracle happened, I never believed them fully, 100%, until it actually happened to me not too long ago. Some of you may know that I caught COVID. And two weeks before, well, after I had, had COVID, I had to take a PCR test. And I thought, why am I paying 70 pounds for a PCR that will probably be positive. And this was before a cruise. And it turned out to be negative. And I thought, that's a miracle. And it did happen to me. I can't fault it. I, nobody can fool it because it's a PCR that's done somewhere else. And that was it. And this morning, another miracle happened. Not to me, but to uh, Julie Tyler. I rang her last night to ask how things were going because they are struggling. And she said, we can't drive the car because we've lost the logbook and uh, it's not insured. So Gilbert said, you're not allowed to drive just in case something happens. And we said, could you find it? Could you try and locate it? And we tried all sorts of things. And this morning, she just left me a message on my phone to say she found it this morning on the fridge with three magnets holding it up. <laughs> That's a miracle. Amazing. I love it. I love it when God does that. I was reading this week um, on 
Facebook, there was somebody, uh, I can't remember which organisation because I'm following quite a few that are working in the Ukraine, um, Christian organisation, and they were saying, you know, they're feeding um, a huge amount of people that are still there. And they said they're finding that, I think it was an eight kilogram bag of pasta was feeding 150 people. Like, how? Okay, you know, I, I, we, my daughter gets through <laughs> more than that in a couple of days, I'm sure, just one person. But that's, that is God. You know, that is, you know, the, the same as the, the feeding of the 5,000. Do we want to see that? I, I, I don't know if I would be, would I be prepared to be in that position? They're seeing it because... They're in an, a, a really difficult situation. That's why they're seeing God's provision. You know, am I willing to put myself out there and go, okay, God, I'm, I'm looking to you to see what you're doing. He's still performing miracles today. Give us today our daily bread. We've, we've touched on this a little bit in the last couple of weeks when Simon's been talking. I just want to go back to... Um, uh, Exodus 16, where, where the, the, the Israelites were complaining because they had no food. I'm just going to read it. Then the whole community of Israel set out from Elim. Elim. This is uh, Exodus 16. And journeyed into the wilderness of Sin between Elim and Mount Sinai. They arrived there on the 15th day of the second month, one month after leaving the land of Egypt. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. If only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, they moaned. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted, but now you've brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day, the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this uh, to see whether or not they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they will gather food, and when they prepare it, there will be twi twice as much as usual. So Moses and Aaron said to the people of Israel, By evening, you'll realize it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. In the morning, you will see his glory. Uh, see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaints, which are against him, not against us. Uh, what have we done that you should complain about us? Then Moses added, the Lord will give you meat to eat in the evening and bread to satisfy you in the morning, for he has heard all of your complaints against him. What have we done? Yes, your complaints are against the Lord, not against us. Then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the whole entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord as he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out towards the wilderness. And there they could see the awesome glory of God in the cloud. Then the Lord said to Moses, I've heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them in the evening you'll have meat to eat and in the morning you will have all the bread you want. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, vast numbers of quail flew in and covered the camp. And the next morning, the area around the camp was wet with dew. When the dew evaporated, a flaky substance as fine as frost blanketed the ground. The Israelites were puzzled when they saw it. What is it? They asked each other. They had no idea what it was. And Moses told them, it's the food the Lord has given you to eat. These are the Lord's instructions. Each household should gather as much as it needs. Pick up two quarts for each person in your tent. So the people of Israel did as they were told. Some gathered a lot, some only a little. But when they measured it out, everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had enough. Each family had just what it needed. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until the morning. But some of them didn't listen and kept some of it until the morning. But by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. Moses was very angry with them. 
After this, the people gathered the food morning by morning, each family according to its need. And as the sun became hot, the flakes they had picked up melted and disappeared. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much as usual, four quarts for each person instead of two. Then all the leaders of the community came and asked Moses for an explanation. He told them, this is what the law commanded. Tomorrow will be a day of complete rest, a holy Sabbath day set apart for the Lord. So bake or boil as much as you want today and set aside what is left for tomorrow. So they put some aside until the morning, just as Moses had commanded. And in the morning, the leftover food was wholesome and good without maggots or odor. Moses said, eat this food today, for today is the Sabbath day dedicated to the Lord. There will be no food on the ground today. You may gather the food for six days, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day. There will be no food on the ground that day. But some people went out anyway on the seventh day, but they found no food. The Lord asked Moses, how long would these people refuse to obey my commands and instructions? They must realize that the Sabbath is the Lord's gift to you. That is why he gives you a two-day supply on the sixth day, so there will be enough for two days. On the Sabbath day, you must each stay in your place. Do not go out and pick up food on the seventh day. So the people did not gather any food on the seventh day. The Israelites called the food manna. It was white like coriander seed, and it tasted like honey wafers. You know, God has he said that he is going to provide for us every day. So why is it we hold on to things from the past? Why can we not let go of that? When he says it's going to be new every morning, we, we sang about it this morning. New every morning. His provision is there for us every single day. So why do we hold on to the past? Why do we hold on and go, oh, yeah, but back then I had, I had this. No, God, God wants to do something new for you every day. You know, every day we should be going, okay, Lord, well, what have you got for me today? Because we pray it. That's how Jesus told us to pray. Give us today our daily bread. Give us everything we need today. Give us all the provision we need. You know, we, we often sing uh, a song, don't we, about uh, all, all, about all we need is Jesus. He's, he's everything we need. And yet we go, but I'll just, I'll just hold some back in reserve just in case Jesus isn't enough. He is enough. He's enough every day. So does anybody have a testimony on provision? Thank you. Yes, I hope this comes over okay. Um, bread, it's very basic substance, isn't it? Um, not much to it, really. We've just had a bit this morning. Um, but uh, the more I've meditated on this idea of uh, daily bread, the more I realise it's about everything that God gives us, has made available to us, we can expect to receive uh, in that daily bread. Um, and just two examples of this. Um, manna. Um, when they threw open the tent flaps in the morning, the Israelites, what did they see on the ground? They saw what appeared to be this white fluid, you know, dew that was on all the grass. Doesn't that remind you of milk? And what did it taste like? It tasted like honey. So every morning they had a reminder that they were going to the land of milk and honey. It's not just in the future, it's here, it's now. And we can receive that. And, and it became bread, became the manna, didn't it? So in that manna was everything God's going to give us. And the other example, yes, um, in the uh, Gospels, you remember Jesus went um, uh, and visited this Syrophoenician woman, is that right? And she had a daughter, I think, who was very sick. And Jesus was very distant, you know, he didn't want to deal with this lady, because I suppose she was a Gentile or something. Anyway, I can't remember the exact quote, but he says it's not right to give the children's bread. And how it finishes, I can't remember. But the healing that that lady needed for her daughter, which she got in the end, was described by Jesus as the children's bread. Um, and what could be more basic than bread? 
and the children's bread at that, and the crumbs that fell from the table. And in that bread was healing. So again, when I pray, um, give us today our daily bread, I'm saying, Lord, I want your healing today. But you can attach to that anything, can't you? You know, everything that God's got for us is in that bread. And we took it this morning in communion. Why did Jesus use the same example? Anyway, I won't go on. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, every day. God's provision every day. Whew. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those uh, that sin against us. And actually, there's a little bit more to that if you uh, go on to verse 14 and 15. And it says, if you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. Yeah, what, what, what if God actually means what he says? He does. He does mean what he says. God always means what he says. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. How do you forgive those that sin against you? Do you forgive totally, fully? Or do you hold a little bit of resentment? So what about if God forgave our sins the same way that we forgive those that sin against us? We're going to watch a little video clip. Thank you, Lord. In a small apartment building in North Minneapolis, a 59-year-old teacher's aide sings praise to God for no seemingly apparent reason. Indeed, if anyone was to have issues with the Lord, it would be Mary Johnson. For all you've done for me. He never had a chance. In February 1993, Mary's son, Loramian Bird, was shot to death during an argument at a party. He was 20 and Mary's only child. My son was gone. The killer was a 16-year-old kid named O'Shea Israel. I wanted justice. He was an animal. He deserved to be caged. And he was. Tried as an adult and sentenced to 25 and a half years, O'Shea served 17 before being recently released. He now lives back in the old neighborhood, close to Mary. This close. He lives next door. Next door. How a convicted murderer ended up living a door jam away from his victim's mother is a story not of horrible misfortune, as you might expect, but of remarkable mercy. A few years ago, Mary asked if she could meet O'Shea here at Minnesota's Stillwater State Prison. As a devout Christian, she felt compelled to see if there was some way, if somehow she could forgive her son's killer. What'd she say to you? I believe the first thing she said was, look, you don't know me, I don't know you, let's just start with right now. And I was befuddled myself. O'Shea says they met regularly after that. When he got out, she introduced him to her landlord, who, with Mary's blessing, invited O'Shea to move into the building. Today, they don't just live close, they are close. Clearly, Mary was able to forgive. Unforgiveness is like cancer. It will eat you from the inside out. It's not about that other person. Me forgiving him does not diminish what he's done. Yes, he murdered my son, but the forgiveness is for me. It's for me. For O'Shea, it hasn't been that easy. I haven't totally forgiven myself yet. I'm learning how to forgive myself and I'm still growing towards, you know, trying to forgive myself and what it is I've done. To that end, O'Shea is now busy proving himself to himself. He works at a recycling plant by day and goes to college by night. He says he's determined to pay back Mary's clemency by contributing to society. In fact, he's already working on it, singing the praises of God and forgiveness at prisons, churches, to large audiences everywhere. Forgiveness is a powerful thing. Yes, I'm grateful. Which explains why Mary can sing yes, her praise of thanks to her audience so of one. Steve Hartman, yes, CBS News. 
Minneapolis. For all you've done for me. It's hard to imagine what that would feel like for uh, your child to lose a child in that way. I, I can't. I can't even imagine. But what a powerful story of forgiveness. And as she said, it wasn't about saying it was okay what happened. But she needed to forgive. And that forgiveness was not, was not for his benefit. It was for her benefit. And it does hold us back. And it can eat away at us. I, I heard a story this week of, of a person who was offended 20 years ago and is still holding on to that. And, and it has held them back from enjoying all that God wants for them because they can't let go of unforgiveness. Jesus said, he taught us to pray, forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. That's not me saying it, that's Jesus saying it. And then lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In my version, it says, don't let us yield to temptation, uh, but rescue us from the evil one. You know, Jesus has this incredible way of bringing deliverance to us. He has this incredible way of leading us on the right path when we're listening doesn't he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life? He makes our path straight. You know, all we've got to do is keep following him. It's when we go off on our own, go off on a little adventure, that's when we get into trouble, when we keep following Jesus and following his straight path. That's when we see these incredible things happen. So I, I feel we need to respond this morning. And I, I just feel that we, we need to pray, which is always a, a great thing to do. Um, but our response, do you need to know the power of the name of Jesus in your life today? Is there something that just seems so big, immovable, impossible? Do you need to, to understand the power of the name of Jesus, the Holy One, the set apart one? Do you need a miracle this morning? Do you need healing? You know, let's not just say it, let's do it. Let's pray for each other. Let's lay hands on the sick in the way that, that Jesus taught us to and believe that we're going to see miracles or we're going to see healing. Do you need provision? Do you need provision? Jesus, Jesus invites you to ask him for that daily bread. Do you need provision? Let us pray for you. Do you need to forgive? Do you need to let go of something that has happened, maybe recently, maybe 20 years ago, do you need to let go of that, that hurt, that person that offended you? Do you need to let it go? Let's respond to that. And do you need deliverance? Do you need uh, God to make your path straight again? Let's, let's pray for that. We're going to pray uh, for each other. You know, we're with the, the body of Christ. We're going to be praying uh, for each other. But I just want to, I just want to encourage you to, you know, let's get back into the habit of praying. And I'm, you know, I, I look around and I know, I know that you are people that pray. So I'm not, you know, please hear my heart. I'm not, I'm not trying to condemn you this morning. 
But let's, let's really understand and grasp hold of the power of prayer. If we want to see things happen, if we want to see our communities, our families change, then that's got to start with prayer. So there's opportunities this week. There's the Zoom prayer. Join in with that on a, on a Thursday night or a Tuesday morning. The Bible plan this week, funny enough, is called Supercharge Your Prayer Life. You know, join us on that. And let's see what God does once we start to pray. Let's see what God does. I think we're going we're gonna to sing a song, but let's be praying uh, for each other. You know, maybe turn to the person in front of you, behind you, next to you. You know, if any of those things kind of stirred something in you and, and you think, yeah, do you know what? I really, I could do with a bit more of that. You know, I need, need God's provision. I, I want to see more miracles. I want to see healing. I need healing this morning. I want to I wanna know the power of the name of Jesus. Really know it. Just, just pray with each other. Um, as we sing as well. Yeah, so let's let's respond. So it'd be good if everyone we could just all stand together if you're able and Yeah, so um I've just got a few notices. We're gonna wrap up there um so that we can relieve our uh children's and youth workers. Um but yeah like Simon said if you didn't get prayed for and you want us to pray some and you got missed please don't go home without uh asking someone. Um, okay, so last week, you may remember, we took up an offering. Um, um, the, the church in Poland who have had an influx um, of Ukrainian refugees. And uh, because we were able to add a qualifying gift aid and um, some, some other money, it came to £5,205. So thank you, everyone, who... Uh, who gave isn't that amazing um that we can actually help some of those people in need um so that's brilliant thank you jesus and um journey gathering tonight six well 5 45 for coffee and sweet treats i'm told where are you um and then uh uh we're going to be talking tonight about community on mission and what that looks like and the journey gatherings we've been journeying as a church together to let God speak into it and we're looking at what we can be doing with uh, small groups one another so it'd be really good if you can make it tonight really important stuff um, so yes yeah, 5:45 here um, parking at Lifehouse last week parking uh, was full it was a bit of a nightmare um, but we discovered that you can actually park along this road here Kerry managed to spot um, and so along this road here um, Simon's done a map haven't you that went out on the email so maybe just check that um, but you can park on the school hatchings obviously move a little bit further along the road so you're not blocking or causing it to be dangerous but yeah that road uh, if it's full up in the car park you can park there on a Sunday and uh, prayer on Zoom has already been mentioned great opportunity to start um, you know, we're happy to see anyone who can join us and uh, we're going to be praying um, about what we're talking about in our um, journey gatherings, what it looks like to be community on mission. So um, we'll be doing that Tuesday evening, half past seven till eight and Thursday, half past nine till ten. And that is on Zoom. Zoom codes are in emails. If you would like to receive the email and you don't already receive it, then please um, Give Simon, uh, send him an email or uh, you can go through the um, church website or just have a word with us and we can get you connected in in that way. So um, we're going to finish there. It's brilliant to see you all. Bless you. Have a wonderful afternoon and hopefully we'll see you later. <laughs>